This time, it's your turn. Solve this system using Gauss-Jordan elimination. So pause the video and solve the system. Alright, so at first look, you might think that isn't it that the that solution is quite obvious because of these? We have to remember that even though there's an obvious solution, the system might be a consistent and dependent system, which means we have infinitely many solutions and not just the obvious solution that you are thinking of. So, we have to double check and we have to make sure that the, the solution that is obvious or you think that is obvious is the only solution. So, let's solve this. Let's first write this as A, augmented matrix. So, we'll have here 2, 3, 5, then 0. I guess our brackets are spacing a little off. Let's rewrite that again. We'll have 2, 3, 5, then 0. Then we'll have negative 5, 6, negative 17, and 0. And we have we have seven negative four three zero. So there we go. So the first thing to do is change this to one so that this will be our first leading one, and that would mean that we have to divide everything by two or multiply everything by one half. So that means for row one, we need to multiply everything by one half. So, let's first write the unaffected rows, negative 5, 6, negative 17, 0. Then we'll have 7, negative 4, 3, 0. Then, for our row 1, 1 half times 2 is 1, 1 half times 3 is 3 halves, 1 half times 5 is 5 halves, 0 times 1 half is 0. Alright. So now we need to turn this to zeros using this one here. So I can have my row 2 as 5 times row 1 plus row 2. Here you go. And here for my row 3, I can have negative 7 times row 1 plus row 3. So first, let's write row 1 because it will not be affected. 1, 3 halves. 5 halves, 0. And then, now going here, 5 times 1 is 5, time, plus negative 5 rather is 0. 5 times 3 halves is 15 halves, plus 6 is 27 halves, 27 halves. 5 halves times 5 halves is 25 over 4. Plus negative 17 is negative 9 halves. Well, 5 times 0 is 0 plus 0 is still 0 here. Alright, so let's now go for the third row. For the third row, negative 7 times 1 is negative 7 plus 7 is 0. Negative 7 times 3 halves is negative 21 halves plus negative 4 is negative 29 halves. There you go. Negative 7 times 5 halves is negative 35 halves. Plus 3, that's negative 29 halves as well. And negative 7 times 0 is 0, plus 0 is 0. There you go. So, take note, we should not be intimidated that all of these are fractions. Again, what we're doing are based on arithmetic operations. Now, I need to turn this to 1. So to turn 27 halves to 1, we, I can multiply this to 2 over 27 because 27 over 2 times 2 over 27, that gets cancelled and we'll just receive 1. So therefore, for row 2, I need to multiply 2 over 27 to it. I'm just going to copy the other rows. And if you notice, once turning 
an entry to a leading one, that's the only step that I write there. So just for us not to be too confused, if what if what we are doing are turning a leading an entry to a leading one or turning an entry to a zero. So there you go. So now let's go to row two. There you go. So therefore, well, 2 over 27 times 0 is 0. 2 over 27 times 27 halves is 1. 2 over 27 times 9 halves is negative 1 third. And 2 over 27 times 0 is 0. And now, we would now have to turn these to zeros using this one here. So therefore, we can have the following. For row 1, I can have negative 3 halves of row 2 plus row 1. While for row 3, I can have 29 halves of row 2 plus row 3. So there you go. So let's write again. Let's first write our second row. 0, 1, negative 1, third 0 because that will not be affected. So now, let's go to our row 1. So negative 3 halves times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 3 halves times 1 is negative 3 halves plus 3 halves is 0. Negative 3 halves times negative 1 third is 1 half plus, one, plus 5 halves. That is 6 halves or 3. And negative 3 halves times 0 is 0 plus 0 is 0. Alright. So, for this row, oops, what happened here? There you go. Alright. So now, 29 halves times 0 is, ah, here, 0 is 0 plus 0 is 0. 29 halves times 1 is 29 halves plus negative 29 halves is 0. 29 halves plus negative 1 third plus negative 29 halves will be negative 58 thirds, while 29 half times 0 is 0 plus 0 is 0. So there you go. Alright. Okay. So now we have this one here, and all we need to do is turn this to a leading 1, and then remove this to 0. So let's, let's adjust a little bit. Ah, no. I think the space is okay. So first, let's turn row 3. So we'll have our row 3. Oops, let's change it to a different color. There you go. So let's have row 3 multiplied to negative 3 over 58. So that it gets cancelled to 1. So first, let's copy the unaffected rows. 0, 1, negative 1, third, 0. And, well, obviously here, we're just going to have all zeros. Oops, sorry, wrong ink. There you go, we'll have zero, zero, this becomes one, and this becomes zero as well. Alright, so let's just turn this down. Let's just pull that down. And I'm going to go over to this side. There you go. And now I just need to turn these two zeros. So therefore, for row 1, I'm going to have, this is 3, so that I'll have negative 3 times row 3 plus row 1. While for row 2, I'm going to have one third of row 3 plus row 2, based from this one here. So, let me just have that, and I'm just going to copy the last row. There you go. Now for row 1, I'm now going to have, well here it's 0, so negative 3, negative 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1, plus 0 is 0, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, plus 3 is 0, negative 3 times 0 is 0, plus 0 is 0. And here, we'll have 1 third. So similar, 1 third. 1 third times 0 is 0, plus 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 
one third times one is one third plus negative one third is zero. One third times zero is zero plus zero is zero. So finally, we have our reduced row echelon form. And we have confirmed that based on this, let's just look back at our equation. There you go. We just confirm that our answers could be based on this row, x sub 1 is equal to 0. On this row, x sub 2 is equal to 0. And on this, x sub 3 is equal to 0. And only zeros are the possible solutions here because we got a consistent and independent system. If this was a consistent and dependent system, we would have gotten a parametric equation. But since we did not, we got this one. So here's another example of solving a system using Gauss-Jordan elimination.